and the details of things. The vine up the house that's been growing for years and has its way, its roots. I think part of my legacy is movement, is to see movement and, and to be liberated from what associations you might have about dance. When I went to San Francisco, and uh, had the great good fortune of meeting uh, Anna Halperin, um, a dancer. She was at that time about 35, I was about 21. It was a wonderful moment to meet her because uh, she was into a new period of her work and she was very excited about it, or very, very deeply into it. And there were about four of us that kind of became her laboratory. And what I loved about the classes is that the process was workshop. She wouldn't be teaching us certain movements. She'd be um, giving us suggestions for some, something to explore. There were three main areas um, of exploration. One was anatomical. And uh, we might uh, look at a skeleton. She had a skeleton. We'd look how the skull sits there, and the curves, and the ball and socket of the, of the hip socket. And then we'd spend an hour or a half hour exploring it, maybe using momentum, or taking weight, or moving it or moving the shoulder blade back and forth and even as I do this I find myself kind of in this what is this it's kind of a um, early er, I, I don't know what kind of posture this is but it makes me feel a certain way it makes me want to go around a certain way we, we just explore, and then after about an hour of everyone exploring on their own, we'd show each other movements that we found. I'd probably come up with this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it makes me feel like that. <laughs> Another uh, area of exploration was uh, some basic elements, like uh, like momentum, like if we get you might get a in and what it takes to stop your momentum. Um, or, or, or what it feels like to really get a taste of, of your mass going through space. Uh, or, or we might explore negative space. Uh, I might be aware of the simplicity of this and now the the complexity of the negative space and just get focused on that or between two people going far, coming near, um, line, um, see there's my shadow uh, over this. <laughs> so relating to your environment, being aware of your environment. After studying for four years with Anna, uh, pretty much every day, and teaching her work to children's classes, uh, so that my whole life was pretty involved with that work. I left it, went to New York, and uh, again had the great fortune to. Um, 
find a teacher who was teaching us about John Cage. And John Cage um, is a composer, philosopher, um, that brought some ideas to the art community that were very influential. So I think he was very aware of if you're just quiet and listen to sound, that there's so much going on. Let's do that for just a few seconds. Let, uh, I'm going to be quiet. Let's, let's just hear it. Atmosphere, a certain quality of sound, certain details. Bob Dunn was um, very involved with studying John Cage's work. And Robert Dunn was playing piano for the classes, and his wife was in the company, Judith Dunn. And John Cage was the artistic director of music, so Robert Dunn was really close to John, who's whose work he was studying, Robert, and decided to offer this class uh, for the dancers to um, have the dancers think about m making their own choreography, mm -hmm. doing their own research, and starting out by working with John Cage's scores. It interested me that we weren't learning certain movements, that we were asked to find our own interpretation within a certain given situation, which is how it had been with Anna. I th remember one, one assignment, which was that next week we were to bring in some three-minute pieces and not work on them for more than three minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was more up my alley. He, I think Yvonne, I, I don't know if this is the exact quote, but the meaning is there, there was gold in the ground and we were standing right on it. I think one thing that I really liked is a kind of physical effort. Like slant board, you're really pulling on the ropes. Mm -hmm. uh, seesaw, you're really working to not fall off. Huddle, you, especially then, we just climb on each other. It was a going for a certain kind of physical sensation, almost mm -hmm. like white kids will wrestle. You're pushing against something that's pushing against you, maybe a longing for, for that kind of physicality. Okay, now, Make a strong little mountain, and I'll be the first to climb over. And then we're going to take turns. Bring it a little closer together. There you go. There you go. Ooh, I can still do this, I think. <laughs> okay, lower your hand. See, I can take my time to find to find a way. <laughs> I have been a camp counselor and everybody was going to go on a, on a wonderful hike and climbing on the rocks and I got sick and wasn't able to go and I came back from the summer and I made this piece. <laughs> okay, now I'm part of the 
supporting group and someone else comes over. Towards the last period of time when I was working with Anna, I had seen in her among her magazines a magazine issue about the work of the Japanese Butai. Two pieces especially inspired me. One by Saburo Murakami, who made a series of, of big frames like you might stretch a canvas on, but he put paper on them, and he put one in front of the other, and then he just went walking right through it. So that was like a single thing that asked for a certain action, and that was all you needed was that one action. Another one was um, Kazuo Shiragi or something like that, who, or, who did a piece called Challenging Mud, and he had a ton of mud, and he was in it, I don't know if he was naked or just with some underpants, and just wrestling the mud. And I thought, wow, you know, I'd love to do that. And the closest I could come to that kind of pushing and throwing and struggling was the huddle and the slant board. I am interested in bringing in a third party of impressions that we have uh, of our immediate environment, our social environment, and also the environment of the media. I first got into the news animations when my father died because he was always reading the newspaper and I never read the newspaper. And when he died, I thought, well, someone in the family's got to read it. <laughs> and I think he got us out of a Jewish family out of Europe just in the nick of time because he read the newspaper and he knew that if we don't get out now, we're not getting out. Mm. So I thought, okay, I better read the newspaper, and and I got into it, and and um, and I can't remember names very much, but I get the hang of things. I offered a workshop called Work in Progress, and I advertised it as for people who are at a transition in their artwork, and they don't know what direction they're going to take kind of a support group. I, we hmm. didn't have that term at the time. And there was a woman who had given up reading the newspaper oh, wow. and wanted to get back into reading it, huh. but thought that maybe working with a dancer, she would find a more personal relationship to it, because she didn't like how she was relating to the newspaper. And she had us do certain exercises that I found very inspiring. I was coming to the news for the first time. Wow. And um, so I had to say, okay, now um, the oil companies are buying up farmland. Um, and I'm new like that. And they've got these big machines, and they just go straight. Whereas these little farms, uh -huh. you know, and almost like a kid making a cartoon or something. Um, uh -huh. It would help me to get into it. Because just to read it, it seems so dry. And I thought, I can't remember any of this. Mm -hmm. But if I, I won't say acted it out. Right. But in a way, yeah. Um, then I'd start to understand it more. Economic 
to the real, to flesh, to to flesh that that to algae, to to oxygen, to H two O. It, it refers to fish. The fish is the fish is like me. I could be a fish. I could just as easily be a fish. But broke is like broke is like the soldier that gets money to go to war. It's like the coins. It's like to have coins is broke. And, and I and I and I was reading in the ocean. I mean in the newspapers. I was reading. I was reading that we shouldn't worry that China's economy is not slowing down. It, it's in fact it's it's picking up quite nicely. <laughs> and I, I, I once asked a stockbroker, I said, why does the economy have to keep growing and growing? I worry about any, anything that has to keep growing and growing. And, and if you have ever looked at the I Ching, you, you, you would worry about anything <laughs> growing and growing and growing. One exercise that we'll probably do in class I call movement memory snapshot. And um, I say, um, if I were to ask you for a memory of taste, you would come up with different memories. You would be scanning different memories. But I ask you for a movement memory snapshot. Um, and let's see if I can come up with the right this minute. Um, yes. Um, a, a, a dog along the river, um, the waves, the little waves were lapping up and the dog was just galloping <laughs> just along that part where the waves lap up on the, on the sand. Okay, so... ocean just a week ago, in the Pacific. <coughs> but it was more like, <laughs> <laughs> and then you look out where the waves are smooth and you think, oh, I could just lie back. I'm <laughs> You, you don't uh, try to avoid saying um, it was getting close to Thanksgiving and we all went <laughs> over to my uncle's and, um, and but this year it was raining so we didn't so we went instead we went somewhere else but the car skidded off the road and the mud was flinging off of the tire okay um, well, just go for the mud flinging off of the tire. That's 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 the movement memory. We don't have to know all the history around the snapshot. I just recently uh, danced with uh, the Charlemagne Palestine, and w we first worked together in 1970, and, wow. and and we over the years have done many concerts together. It was last fall, I think. We performed together at the Louvre under the pyramid, uh, <laughs> in the atrium under the pyramid. And and he played grand piano, and the aud and it was after hour after museum hours, so the audience was in a circle, and it was just people who had come there for the performance. It was very focused, and the lights were beautiful. And that's a vocabulary of, of movement that I can still do. And I feel that we performed well, that I performed as well as ever, and that I was clear in what I was working with and I was able to get off on it. Mm -hmm. Now, it had to do with kind of striding in a circle and then tilting different ways and and like 
going out and then tilting back and then going out in this direction and then tilting back and getting a lot of momentum going. Now, if I had a bad knee, I couldn't have done that. Right. Um, but I did that at 89, I mean at 79. Um, wow. And I think if I couldn't do that, I could do something else. And so many things, long ago, starting long ago, with their own This coming in, this coming through, this. And the details of things. The vine up the house that's been growing for years and has its way, its roots, 